This is the um, last in the series of these tutorials on the uh, mashup tool, the Tom Bio Productivity Tools. Rather than explain what it does, which we've done in previous tutorials, I'm really just going to demonstrate what, more about what it can do uh, in this tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the web and get a hectad map of an interesting little plant from the BSBI hectad map website. It's got quite an interesting distribution, which is why I'm picking this one. It's this one here, Oxalis articulata. Let's copy the image. Put in a name, Oxalis. Got the right um, world file selected. Set the background color, transparent color to white. And display the map. An interesting distribution as you can see, mainly southern and eastern, but also around the coasts. And it, I, I, I'm not a plant expert, but I looked at it and I wondered, could there be a climatic reason uh, contributing to this? And it's a good one for the demonstration because also on the web are plentiful maps from the uh, Meteorological Office showing lots and lots of different climate maps. Uh, this is a really uh, rich website. But the maps are, you know, they're there in isolation, but using this tool we can view them with, with other data. So this one's showing mean temperature for the United Kingdom over this period here. Um, let's just grab that one to start with, I think. So I've got a world file for these. Met Office UK Climate. This is mean temp. I'm not going to set a background transparency because we're going to use it itself as the background. Let's pop it below the Oxalis map. And there you can immediately see we can now look at those uh, that distribution for the Oxalis in relation to that map. Now on the internet of course those are two completely unrelated maps and there's no way really of looking at them. Um, together as powerfully as we can here, but using them in the GIS together, we can we can um, explore them as we wish. Now there doesn't really seem to be too much relationship there. Let's just flick it on and off. Oh, I don't know. That's actually not bad. That temperature map may well explain some of that. We'll just try another one. Let's look at rainfall. I just really, my aim here is to show you how quick it is to do this stuff. So here we go, rainfall. We can also, rather than look at the whole year as we're doing there, we could look at spring rainfall, summer. Let's go for summer rainfall. Right click the map, copy image, up to QGIS. So now we've got, did I say summer rainfall? I think so, summer rainfall. I've got the right world file selected. Pop that in. Again, let's move it under the hectad map. So there we've got summer rainfall and underneath it mean mean annual temperature. So you can see how quickly we can explore data really from quite unrelated sources. And on the on the web they're just images, but here in the GIS they really become um, quite powerful. Let's go something completely different. Another good view uh, store of these raster maps, a very rich store on the on the web, is um, the BTO Atlas Map website. And I'm going to look at uh, a really interesting little bird, which most of you know, willow warbler. And willow warbler has undergone some dramatic change uh, in recent years. So I'm really interested in seeing this map in the GIS. So copy image. So I've created a world file for these BTO map store maps. Change name here, Willow Warbler. I'm going to instead of there's not much white on that map, so I'm going to set a global transparency. Knock that up a bit. Register it. And there we let's take off the Oxalis now. So there we've got the 
change showing the greatest area is a change of these dark colors here and, and where it's well the greatest areas of loss of the dark areas and where willow warbler has gone up are these sort of orange areas and we can overlay that on things like the, the climate maps or anything else that we wish to explore so you can see how really powerful it is when we can overlay these together okay let's look at something completely different I'm going to delete all of those maps now using this button here and I'm back to the web and I'm interested in spiders and there's a great um, source of maps on the web for spider distributions under the spider recording scheme website and these are more up-to-date maps generally than are on the MBN so these are quite an interesting source of information for me but normally of course I can only view them in isolation using this tool I can take them into the GIS so we're going to look at the national distribution Pisora mirabilis which is the nursery web spider so I'll copy the image back to QGIS Pisora and we need the right world file which is the SRS UK now you'll notice a problem when I use this unfortunately the map has come through largely black let's take off the past county boundaries in contrast to the website where the background was white and the reason this is so is because this image has actually got transparent areas that are coming out white here and Q just doesn't handle those too well luckily we can get around it if I delete the image and do it again but this time I set the background to transparent and set the black the transparent background color as black it'll work and this works thankfully the dots themselves showing the distribution aren't quite black uh, and so we can get away with it in this case so you have to learn the kind of foibles of the different uh, sources of your information and learn how to display them best in the GIS okay let's just put the vice county boundaries on so you can satisfy yourself that, that is correctly registered zoom into the the borders area over here the area I'm interested in Shropshire that's very coarse data here but on the SRS website they've actually got instead of hectare data they've got tetrad data when you zoom into specific areas and I've also created world files for some of these so if I copy the image there I saw um, say call it Shrops pick the right world file mash it up let's take off the national distribution and there you can see the Shropshire distribution from the SRS website if I go back again let's pick another county Cheshire which is just to the north copy that image I've also got a world file created for that there so I can paste that one in and you'll see it appear up here so you can see I'm tiling these distributions together and I've got one for Staffordshire as well which is this here so let's go and get that copy it back to QGIS select the right world file and mash it up in it comes so you can see I'm tiling these these different distributions so that's another really powerful thing that I can do with it as long as I've got the pre-prepared um, world files now as a final demonstration of, of the sort of power of using these tools together and looking at data together I'm going to open the MBN tool you can actually get these to sort of tab like that and I'm going to get the data for Pisora mirabilis from the MBN I'm going to create a two kilometer square map there we go there's the data for the MBN coming in beside the um, SRS stuff I'm going to put it under the SRS stuff Finally, I'm going to also open the Birec tool and look at the data from my own recording scheme. The sort of most up-to-date data, what we believe is the most up-to-date data. So, so 
So let's find Pisora. And we'll create this as Atlas Circles, two kilometer map. There you can see the data from the SRS scheme. Let's just change the color of that. So we can see it standing out a bit better. Put a backdrop on. And there we go. So you can see MBN data, our local data, the most up to date stuff coming live from our database, and also the stuff from the SRS website all together there, all from different sources using different um, Tombio tools in this suite. And you can see how powerful it is when you really get this stuff working together.